Belief in Metempsychosis by H. P. Blavatsky, read by Dave Marsland of Cardiff Theosophical Society. This piece is an extract from Old Philosophers and Modern Critics. There was not a philosopher of any notoriety who did not hold to this doctrine of metempsychosis as taught by the Brahmins, Buddhists and later by the Pythagoreans in its esoteric sense whether he expressed it more or less intelligibly. Origen and Clemens Alexandrinus, Synesius and Chalcidius all believed in it and the Gnostics who are unhesitatingly proclaimed by history as a body of the most refined, learned and enlightened men were all believers in metempsychosis. Socrates entertained opinions identical with those of Pythagoras and, as the penalty of his divine philosophy, was put to a violent death. The rabble has been the same in all ages. These men taught that men have two souls of separate and quite different natures, the one perishable, the astral soul, or the inner fluidic body, which must not be confused with the astral body or double, the other, incorruptible and immortal, the algoides, or portion of the divine spirit, at the body. That the mortal or astral soul perishes at each gradual change at the threshold of every new sphere, becoming with every transmigration more purified. The astral man, intangible and invisible as he may be to our mortal earthly senses, is still constituted of matter, though sublimated. Now, if the latter means anything at all, it means that the above teaching about the two souls is exactly that of the esoteric and of many exoteric theosophists. The two souls are the dual manus, the lower personal astral soul, and the higher ego. The former, a ray of the latter falling into matter. That is to say, animating man and making of him a thinking, rational being on this plane. Having assimilated its most spiritual elements in the divine essence of the reincarnating ego, perishes in its personal material form at each gradual change as Karma Rupa at the threshold of every new sphere or David Chan followed by a new reincarnation. It perishes because it fades out in time. All but its intangible effervescent photography on the astral waves burnt out by the fierce light which ever changes but never dies. While the incorruptible and the immortal spiritual soul that which we call body manus and the individual self becomes more purified with every new incarnation. Laden with all it could save from the personal soul, it carries it into Devachan to reward it with ages of peace and bliss. This is no new teaching, no fresh development, as some of our opponents have tried to prove, and even in Isis Unveiled, the earliest hence the most cautious of all the modern works on theosophy, the fact is distinctly stated. The secret doctrine does not concede immortality to all men alike. It declares with Porphyry that only through the highest purity and chastity shall we approach nearer to our God and receive in the contemplation of him the true knowledge and insight.